Well, this Monday, uh, I had a minor skin surgery, and uh, after my minor skin surgery, I popped into the office just to check on things, and uh, your leaders were gathered together, talking and praying, and they said, we really feel like uh, the Lord wants to move us in a different direction. And with this, this week's uh, message and the following week's message, and that was great for them to feel that, but I had already written my sermons for this week and the next week, and yet we talked and prayed, and they were right, and I agreed with them, and so uh, God stirred my heart to preach out of Philippians chapter four. If you have your Bibles, turn there, and if you're at home, uh, if you're laying in bed, just reach on your nightstand, hopefully your Bible's right there, turn it open to Philippians chapter four, get your phone and open up your, your uh, Bible app. Uh, and, and we're going to talk today and next week about the pathway to peace. What is the pathway to peace? And it would be nice if the pathway to peace was this. Boy, I'm just always peaceful because things always go my way. I always have extra money. I never have stress in my relationships. My body always feels healthy. And, and everything goes my way. So I'm peaceful. But I don't even know if that's peace. Uh, that's, that's, that's a dream. Uh, I, I believe one day in heaven it'll be like that. But we're not, we're not there yet. And what struck me as I've been thinking about this topic, and as we're going to in a moment look at, at Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 7, what struck me is that uh, there's lots of reasons to be anxious. I mean, let's be totally honest. There are plenty of reasons to be anxious, and there always have been. If you want to be anxious, you don't have to look very far. Just glance around, you'll find some things to be anxious about. I was thinking about my upbringing as a, as a kid. I'm 57 years old now, so a few years back, I was a kid. And, and I remember, and I'm curious of those of you watching right now, anybody remember duck and cover drills? Remember duck, duck and cover drills? This was at school where they would have this alarm go off and you would practice as a little kid, and for the young people, you're gonna be surprised about this, but this really happened. We would kneel underneath our desks, not to pray, but we'd kneel underneath our desks, put our heads down, cover our heads with our, with our hands in case there was a nuclear holocaust or a giant earthquake in California. You know, so you're a little kid and you practiced getting ready for a nuclear holocaust or earthquakes, and yet we're still here. Praise Jesus. I remember that we were going to be invaded by killer bees from our neighbors in the south. And we were told that killer bees were coming. Anybody remember killer bees here? Yeah, killer bees were coming, and yet we're still here. I remember overpopulation until I finally got on a plane as a kid and flew across the country and saw this open land and thought... I guess it's pretty much Los Angeles and, and New York. But anyways, overpopulation was oil shortage. I remember, I remember when my parents would have to go park their car on odd and even days in a line at the gas station because you could only get gas certain times. And the, the world was going to fall apart then. As a little kid, there were plenty of things for me to be anxious about. And yet here I am, 57 years old, grown up now. And, and what I just didn't know then was that God was on the throne. I didn't grow up in a Christian home. But I know now God is on the throne. And crazy things happen in our world, but God is always on the throne. So now turn the clock ahead to today. Are there any things to be anxious about? Are there any things that can cause stress or just reach into our heart and try to steal our peace? And the answer is yes, there always is. Global health challenges and the concerns of that. You're, you're at home watching online because, of, because in California, we can't have more than 250 people at a time gather together. There's, there's, there's a, a health concern. That can create anxiety and stress. Financial upheaval. The markets are all over the place. That can cause stress and anxiety. Maybe relational turmoil, political turmoil. It seems like people don't get along very well anymore. It seems like people can't even talk in the political world. That can create stress. Some of you are like, man, I'm getting stressful thinking about it. That's the reality of the world we live in. And then it can hit closer to home. I got a text message the other day from actually one of our keyboard players here at Shoreline, and it just, the text, text, text message said, the end of an era, and it was a picture of a closed sign at Turtle Bay Taqueria. Turtle Bay Taqueria in Seaside, one of the, it's the best habanero sauce in town, is closed. And you say, well, that's not like the other things, but it's, it's a personal moment of existential strife. You know, I like, I like their hot sauce, right? Um, I, I got news yesterday that a close family member who hasn't been informed of it yet, but, but others know about it, uh, has had some tests, and he has a recurrence of cancer. And I'm praying for that. And you go, man, with all that, in our personal lives, in our community life, nationally, globally, is there a pathway to peace? Is, there, is, there even, is it even possible? And what I've learned through killer bees to coronavirus is that God's still on the throne. 
If you have your Bibles with you, I invite you to open to Philippians chapter 4, and I want to read verses 4 through 7. It won't be on the screen. I want you just to listen or to follow along in your Bible. If you have your own Bible in front of you, if you have a Bible app, your own Bible, and something to write with, or you can take notes in your app, I encourage you to highlight the things that strike you that would give you kind of a pathway to peace. Listen to God's word. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Man, wherever you are right now, I want you to say those words with me. The Lord is near. One more time. The Lord is near. No matter what you feel, the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything. But in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, it's beyond our comprehension, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. I believe in this passage and all through the word of God, there's a pathway to peace. There's a journey we can walk that will lead to peace. The, The Holy Spirit, when the Spirit dwells in us, if you're a Christian, God's Spirit dwells in you. But the Holy Spirit in us brings peace, love, joy, peace. So peace is there, but there's ways to walk in peace more intentionally. We're going to think about that this week and next week. It will change your life, and it will change the lives of the people around you if they watch you walk in the peace of Jesus Christ. I want you to notice as we look at this passage in Philippians chapter 4, and I'm going to read it again in just a minute, and it'll be on the screen. You can follow along that way. But I want you to know the setting of the Apostle Paul writing this, uh, this letter to the church of Philippi. It's it's, it's called one of the prison letters or one of the prison epistles. It's called that because the Apostle Paul was in jail. He was incarcerated. When he's writing about rejoicing in the Lord, when he's writing about being anxious about nothing, he's incarcerated for following Jesus. At that time, there's incredible political turmoil going on between the Roman Empire and the Jewish people, and, and really the whole world was kind of in turmoil at that time. And there was also religious tensions going on. So Paul is facing religious tensions, political tensions, and he's in jail. How's your week going? I mean, that that was Paul's week as the Holy Spirit inspires him to write these words. And and so, so understanding the context of this, understanding that as the apostle Paul is writing, he's in jail in a time of great turmoil, he writes these words. And follow along one more time. Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your, gentleness, <clears throat> let your gentleness be evident to all, to everyone. Let them notice it and see it. The Lord is near. That line right there should give you comfort. God is near. He's with you. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus. In this passage, there's a number of very practical ways, sort of steps we can take if we walk on the pathway of peace. There's certain steps we take that create that role of peace in our lives. And here's the first one we find in the passage. Here's the pathway to peace. Relentless rejoicing. Commit to be relentlessly rejoicing. You say, well, there's nothing good going on right now. Actually, there is. Stop and look. Pay attention. Is everything going perfect? No. Are there really hard things? Yes. Are there things that create anxiety? Absolutely. Are there things to rejoice in? What's the answer? Yes. Always. Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again. Rejoice. But the focus of our joy has to be on Jesus Christ. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if we keep our eyes on him, if we keep focused on him, we will rejoice in the Lord. And actually, notice what it says. It says, rejoice in the Lord always. Now, here's some bad theology. I'm going to give you some bad theology. I'm telling you it's bad in advance. I'll tell you it's bad afterwards so you don't think this way. But here's bad theology. You should rejoice and thank God for everything that happens in your life because everything is a gift from God. That's not true. Sin is in this world. Satan is at work. We do dumb things sometimes and mess things up. We don't rejoice in sin. We don't rejoice in brokenness. We don't rejoice in pain. But at all times we can rejoice, watch this now, in the Lord. Paul doesn't say rejoice in every circumstance. In the circumstance we rejoice in the Lord. 
The circumstance we might say, God, this is brokenness. This is my own sin. This is, the, the, this is part of the fall. This is the work of demonic work in our world. This is bad stuff. I don't rejoice in that. But while I'm dealing with all that stuff, I rejoice where? In the Lord. That's the key. Rejoice in the Lord always. So I want you to look at the words on the screen. And we're going to just pause for a minute and talk about walking on the pathway of peace. When I want peace to enter in, I will begin rejoicing in the one who is always good, always beautiful, always near, and always powerful. If you want to walk on the pathway of peace, you make a decision. I'm going to rejoice in the Lord no matter what I face. So I want to just pause for a minute. And I want to ask you to quiet your heart. And if it, help, if it helps you to bow your head and close your eyes, you don't have to, but if you want to, just to quiet your heart and say, Lord, in the midst of difficult times, I want to rejoice in you. When times are difficult and painful or uncertain, I want to rejoice in you. God, will you remind me today that I can rejoice in the Lord. And as I walk in joy, Peace comes with that joy. As I turn my eyes to notice the good things around me, the things that are worthy of rejoicing in, my heart becomes peaceful. So I pray right now, I pray that right now, I will, I will just understand the presence of your peace as I rejoice and celebrate. Take a moment quietly and think, what are the things that I can rejoice in? And just say right now, God, I rejoice in this person, I rejoice in the pet I have. I rejoice in, in, in the fact that I, I'm, I'm in a country that today declared a national day of prayer. I rejoice in the good gifts you've given. Take a moment to rejoice in the Lord. And Lord, flood our hearts and flood our lives with peace as we grow to rejoice in you. We pray this in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. But I'm not done yet. The service isn't over. The message isn't over. Here's the next step on the pathway to peace. Public and consistent gentleness. One of the ways that we can, so, so, so we, we're walking through our life, I'm going to keep rejoicing, even though there's tough things happening, I'm going to keep rejoicing. And then I'm going to not only be gentle, but I'm going to be gentle publicly, relentlessly, intentionally gentle. If you want to bring peace in your life and peace in the lives of the people around you, commit to be consistently gentle. Listen to what the passage says. We're just walking through Philippians 4, 4 through 7. In verse 5 it says, let your gentleness be evident to all. I love that. It doesn't just say be gentle. It says, let your gentleness be evident to all. How is, how is your gentleness going to be evident to all? They're going to notice it. They're going to see it. So here's my challenge to you. If you want to grow in peace in times of turmoil and in the good times, make a commitment. I will be gentle with every person I meet. I will be gentle with my children. I will be gentle with my spouse. I'll be gentle with my friends. I'll be gentle with my boss, with my employees. I'll be gentle with my friends. I'll be gentle with random people I meet. If you want to see peace flee the door, stop being gentle. You, you walk into a home that has no gentleness. Peace does not dwell there. You become gentle, and peace comes with gentleness. I was thinking about this the other day because I was making a call to an uh, airline, uh, and when I called the airline, I was needing to change the flight Sherry was on, going to be on to go visit family back in Michigan. And so I called, and because I fly a lot, I have gold status, so I have like a special number I get to call, and they deal with you right away. So I'm spoiled, and, I, and I'm used to being taken care of quickly. And so they said, hello, welcome back. They actually just welcome back, Kevin, Talks to me by name when I call from my cell phone. And what can we do for you today? And I tell them I need to talk with a representative. And they said, we have higher level volumes of traffic than usual. Your waiting time will be an hour and a half to two hours. <laughs> I'm special. I have gold status. Take care of me now. No, they said, no, you, you, we're, we're, getting, we're, you're, we're bumping into the front of the line. The line is two hours long. So I take my phone, I put it on speaker, I set it by me, and I'm at my desk. I just keep working. And after like an hour, I'm like, this is ridiculous. And after an hour, I said, this is crazy. And then this passage hit me because I've been preparing for this message this week. And God said, let your gentleness be evident to all. And I really felt like the Holy Spirit said, whoever picks up that phone, do not tell them how long you've been waiting because they've been told that by every person who's called today. 
Do not tell them that you're frustrated because they didn't do anything to frustrate you. They're trying to help you. Let your gentleness be evident to all. So you know what I did? When they answered the phone, I was ridiculously gentle. I was so not like me. <laughs> I'm, I'm not naturally a gentle person, but God, the Spirit's growing that in me. That's one of the ways that God's working. But I, I, just said, I just said, hey, how are you doing today? The person said, it's pretty crazy. I said, listen, I don't want to take a lot of your time. I think I got a pretty easy change here, and I'll let you get to your next customer. But I, I said, I bet a lot of people are kind of letting you have it today. And they said, oh, yeah. they said, oh it's not too bad. You know, I could tell you, oh, no, it's not too bad. But I, I, said, I said, can I just tell you thank you for doing what you do? And I know that there's the, the call logs are backed up and you're working every single moment. And I, and I was just thinking, how, how could I speak gently with the heart of Jesus? And you know what? I really believe that by the time that phone call was done, that that woman felt a greater level of peace than what I had called. Let your gentleness be evident to all. Can I tell you right now, if you are gentle with anybody you interact with, it will be felt. Because as stress level goes up, and as tension goes up, people lose gentleness. And so one of the ways, the pathway to peace is just walking in gentleness. So let's just pause for a minute. And I don't know, I don't know what encounters you're going to have this week. I don't know who you're going to interact with. But can we pray right now that God would let the gentleness of Jesus be evident to all through our lives. Jesus, this is our prayer. Will you guard our mouths and guard our minds? May we be ridiculously, absurdly gentle in every interaction we have. And God, I pray especially for those people like me who, who maybe have been a little spoiled. And those people who are quick to point out when something's wrong. Lord, may we have a new, fresh spirit of gentleness. And God, may it carry beyond these coming weeks into a lifestyle. And Lord, will you usher in the peace of Jesus that passes all understanding as we are consistently, relentlessly gentle in every interaction we have. Bring your peace in us and through us as we grow in gentleness, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now some of you are thinking, well, that, that's enough right there. That can, that can set my week. Just, I can, that's my one thing to work on. But there's more. The pathway to peace. Awareness of Jesus. If you want to walk in peace, be profoundly aware that you are not walking alone, that Jesus is with you. In the passage, it continues on, and if you have your Bibles open and you're following through, what is the next thing it says? It says, the Lord is near. You know, be gentle. You know, be, be, be rejoice. Be gentle. Why? The Lord is near. Man, if you want to grow in peace, just every day, every moment, simply say this, Jesus, you're with me. Jesus, I'm not alone. The Lord is near. How near? Well, if you're a Christian inside of you, you can't get any more near than the Spirit of God dwelling in you. The Lord is near. And he surrounds you, and he watches over you and me. Jesus Christ is the Prince of Peace, and the Prince of Peace is near you, is with you, is in you. And, and so I want to encourage you to notice the presence of Jesus. I mean, if you're a Christian, the Spirit dwells in you. The Spirit of the living Jesus Christ is in you. But would you begin to pray, Jesus, help me notice that you're near. Help me notice that you're right here next to me. Jesus, as I go into this meeting or as I'm going to this video meeting or whatever it is, Lord, would you let me feel your presence? If you want to walk in peace, the pathway to peace is, is paved with an awareness that the Lord is near. So let's pause again. And let's ask the Lord to show us his nearness and for us to notice him. Lord Jesus, this is our prayer. In these coming weeks where there are a lot of, lot of things that create stress, not just the big national things, but things in our personal lives, may we know that you are near. Lord, as I think about my family member who, who is getting some bad news from the doctors, probably today or tomorrow, Lord, I pray that you would draw near them. This particular person doesn't know you love them. This particular person doesn't yet know the grace of Jesus. But would you show this person that you are near? May this be the moment they open their heart to you. And we thank you, we who follow you, Jesus, we who know you and love you, we thank you that we are never alone. That, that, that you have said in your word that we are actually the dwelling place of the Holy Spirit of God. We're not our own. We are bought with a price. So we're to glorify God in our lives and all that we do. So God, remind us that you are near. Help us feel your presence. And I pray a special prayer right now, Lord, 
for people who are feeling high levels of anxiety and high levels of worry right now, that by your spirit, in a fresh new way, you would descend upon them and just whisper in their heart and whisper in their ears, I am with you, you are not alone. I am the Lord, your God, and I will never leave you or forsake you. Lord, let us experience your presence and bring us peace because of the presence of the Prince of Peace. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen. How do we walk the pathway to peace? How do we move down this pathway? Well, we, we, we just follow the words of Philippians chapter four. Can I challenge you today to think about trying to memorize this passage? Maybe you've never memorized the passage of the Bible. Here's a great one, Philippians four, four through seven. And, and if you memorize this and have it in your heart, it will make a difference. It calls us to, all, it calls us to, 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 to joy, it calls, calls us to peace, it calls us to awareness of the presence of Jesus. And then the pathway to peace. Here's the next thing it says, dethroning anxiety. Saying to anxiety, you're not in charge. You're not taking over my life. You're not ruling my heart. Look at the passage. What does it say next? Do not be anxious about anything. Don't let anxiety rule your life. Do not be anxious about anything. Let, let's linger there. We can say to anxiety, you're not in charge of my life. Anxiety, you're not the boss of me. You're not in charge. I shared this before, but when I was a kid, one of the lines I remember that sort of seared in my ears and my mind and seared in my soul is when I would be doing something that wasn't right and my dad would say these words. He would say, that is not acceptable behavior in this household. And that's not how Harneys behave. We don't do that here. He'd say, that is not acceptable behavior in this household. And there was something about that that made me stop and go, wait a minute. That's not who I am. That's not who, that's not who I should be. And I wonder if we could say to anxiety, say, you are not welcome in this household. You are not welcome in my heart. Have you ever told anxiety, enough with you? Now, I know, that, I know it's more complex than that, and there's great counselors, and there's, there's physiological, chemical things. I'm not, I'm not simplifying it, but I am saying that, that while we get medical help, and while we get counseling help, while we talk with friends, and while we pray, there's moments where you just say, I'm not going to live in anxiety. Anxiety is not going to live in my heart and my life. And God, I'm going to do everything I can to walk the path of peace. So I'm going to rejoice more. And I'm going to pray more. And I'm going to recognize Christ's presence. And I'm going to declare to anxiety, you are not welcome in my heart or in my life. When I want peace to enter in, I will identify my anxiety and talk to Jesus about it. When you want to see peace come in, say, I'm going to recognize I'm feeling anxious right now. I better talk to Jesus. He's the Prince of Peace. Recognize it. And even in, say, in Jesus' name, I will not let anxiety and worry and fear rule my heart and rule my life and ruin my days, my interactions, and my future. Because I walk with the Prince of Peace. So recognize it and declare it and say, this is not who I'm going to be. And then take the steps you need to walk away from anxiety and into the peace of Jesus. And then the pathway to peace. Praying with passion. That if you, if you want to see peace descend upon your heart and fill your home and fill your life and fill our world, begin praying. Here's what the Apostle Paul says as we continue in the passage. But in every situation, in every situation, in what situation? Every situation. By prayer and petition with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Do you notice in that passage it's really saying pray four times? I mean, it's, make, it's making the point. In every situation, by prayer and petition, asking God for things for you and for others, petitioning God, with thanksgiving, that's the kind of prayer, thanking God, present your request to God. So it's saying, but in every situation, how about if you pray, 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 and pray? How's that sound? And then what should I do next? Hmm, I'll pray. Now, we, we're partners with God. We take action. And you know when I preach, I talk about how we're always partnering with God. But the most, most important thing we can do as we partner with God is talk to God about it. What is your anxiety? What is your worry? What is somebody else dealing with? Petition God. Petition God. Petition God. As I was talking with this family member who called me yesterday, and we talked about this other family member who has got, a, got this diagnosis. Before I got off the phone, I said, can we just pray? Because that's what you do. You run to God. You speak to God. You listen for God. You pour your heart out to God. You thank God. You ask for what you need. But you talk to God. If you, the pathway to peace 
I mean, the planks in that pathway to peace, man, it's prayer and it's prayer and it's prayer. And, and so, so we need to ask God, help us grow in prayer. Read these words. When I want peace to enter in, I will ask God to move in power and believe he has power to do all things for his glory and for his good. If I want to walk in peace, I'm going to talk to God. I'm going to ask God. I'm going to petition God. And so God, we do that right now. We just slow down and we bring our anxiety to you. And we say, Lord, I pray that you would deal with this. Lord, my heart is racing. God, I'm watching too much news. <laughs> God, that all that's happening in the world and around me, it feels like it's too much for me. God, would you bring your peace? Would you bring your presence? Would you bring hope? God, would you, would you slow my pace down and slow my heart rate down? Would you turn my eyes and my mind to other things that don't consume me with fear and anxiety? God, I cry out to you. And I ask that you will be near me. I petition you on behalf of those I love and care about. God, I cry out to you for this family member who I've just gotten news about yesterday. Will you bring your healing touch? Will you bring great doctors? Will you bring the care that is needed? Lord, and I pray that I will not become anxious about that situation, but I will come to you with prayer and petition and thanksgiving and make my request known to you. God, teach us to pray in these weeks and months ahead. And then, Lord, when things become more regular and things shift back and we're gathering all together in the worship center and we kind of, may we not shift back to not praying as much. Let this be a moment in time where we speak to you about everything in our lives and continue doing that as we go forward. Lord, can you just speak to us as we walk through this passage? We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The pathway to peace. Tenacious thankfulness. To say, I will be thankful. And this is the final thing we're going to look at this morning. And then we're going to jump back into this passage again next Sunday. But tenacious thankfulness. I will be thankful for everything I can think of to be thankful for. We, we had uh, Jeff Mannion here preaching last week. A, a friend of uh, Shoreline Church from Michigan. And Jeff talked about, he met with our staff and our L team. And talked about just, just journaling and writing thanks every day. I heard that about three years ago. I think when Jeff was here, he had mentioned that before. For the last three years, every day I start my day writing three things I'm thankful for from the day before. And I'm now in my second journal. And, it's, and, and I can go back and just look, look at all these things I'm thankful for. The taste of delicious food. People who love us. A church that has the capacity to do online services and so we're not sitting at home without church, but we can have church together. I'm thankful for that. For Shoreline staff and our L team. That's all that's here right now, some staff and L team and a few family members. But I'm thankful for you. I'm thankful for your faithfulness. I'm thankful for our congregation that for 25 years you've served and you've prayed and you've given and you've built a church in Monterey like there's never been before in terms of the size of a church and the ministries that we can do. I'm thankful for the people who are part of Shoreline. And if I had another two hours right now, I could keep listing things. Are there hard things? Yes. Are there challenges? Yes. Are there things to be thankful for? Yes. And, and so the Apostle Paul says this, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, and right in the middle of it all, with thanksgiving, while you're praying, while you're giving petition, be thanking God for all the good things he's given. Present your request to God. So I want to challenge you to be thankful to notice, to pay attention. And I want to pause again one more time and just ask God to meet us with his peace around this topic of thankfulness. Let's pray together. Lord Jesus, uh, we come to you right now and we pray that you would grow our hearts of thanksgiving. Lord, even when there are difficult things, even when there's real tension and real turmoil, oh God, there are always things to be thankful for. Some people at Shoreline right now are doing church and they have uh, their cat on their lap or their dog on their lap, a pet that they love and they've never had their, their pet at church because we don't do pets at church, but Lord, today they can. And they can just say thank you for this furry little creature who brings me joy. Lord, we live in a beautiful place here in Monterey. We thank you. We thank you for a country that has, that has unparalleled freedoms. We thank you for all of your good gifts. And if all that was not enough, you've given us Jesus who died on the cross and rose again and made heaven our home and is with us now. We are so deeply thankful. Oh Lord, help us continue to express our thankfulness and as we are thankful, let peace sweep into our hearts. We pray this in Jesus' name, amen.
Can I tell you something? If you, every day, look for things to be thankful for, that very action will reroute the channels of your mind and your heart and let peace come flooding in. And, and so let Philippians chapter four, verses four through seven, just live in your soul this week. Read it every single day. Take some time on our website there. You can click, and actually, if you're watching on the, the service, you scroll down, you're gonna see a place that has a link to a PDF. If you know how computers work, and if you have a printer, click on that and print it out and have, put that somewhere, that, this passage somewhere to read it, but also print a couple extra copies and carry them with you. So when you're talking to somebody this week who's really stressed out, you can say, can I tell you something? There's this passage from the Bible that has brought me incredible peace. Can I share it with you and give it to them? We also have that passage online so you can forward it by text or forward it by email. Share this passage with people these next two weeks. They need to hear about the peace of God. Just a couple words to reflect on as we close. When I want peace to enter in, I will ask God to move in power and believe he has power to do all things for his glory and good. If you want to walk in peace, understand that God is on the throne. He is glorious. He is powerful and trust in him. And then a question. What is the transforming power of peace in us, in our homes, in our community, and in our world? What is it that, about peace that is so transformational? I believe that if we begin walking in Philippians 4, 4 through 7, and, and, and if we rejoice every day, if our gentleness is evident to everyone, if we're ridiculously gentle in every interaction, peace comes in. If we recognize that the Lord is near, peace comes in his very presence. If we throw out anxiety and say, anxiety, you don't belong in my life, we name it and we pray against it, peace comes in. If we pray faithfully with prayer and petition, peace comes in. If we're deeply thankful, peace comes in. And here's what happens, especially in times like this. If we can walk in peace, making wise, responsible decisions, it wasn't a fear-filled thing that caused us to cancel services. We talked to local doctors, we talked to the police, and we heard from our governor, and we got our leadership team involved, and we prayerfully discussed. It wasn't a panic, it wasn't a knee-jerk response. It was very prayerful, we took our time, but we felt this was the right thing to do. That's not panic, we're peaceful. And when you walk in peace, other people wonder about that. Next week, we're gonna talk about the power of peace in our lives and for other people. Will you pray with me? Oh, Lord Jesus, you are on the throne. Not just of our lives, not just of the church, of the universe. And in times like this, we may not see it or fully understand what's going on because, Lord, our understanding is limited. But we want to walk in peace. So we pray that Philippians 4, 4 through 7 will become part of our hearts and our lives in these coming days. And that as we rejoice, and that as we're thankful, and as we recognize your presence, and as we're prayerful, as we walk in these things, as, as we're gentle with those around us, fill us with your peace. And we would dare to pray, let that peace overflow to every person we meet, shining the light and the presence of Jesus. We pray this for his glory, and we pray this for our good. And we pray this in the great name of Jesus. Amen.